While making videos on YouTube, I always pay close attention to the comments you leave, particularly when it comes to suggestions, and sometimes the results are extremely positive. When I made my video about the typhoon, a lot of you mentioned The Big Show, the memoirs of Mr. Pierre Klosterman, a French pilot that fought with the RAF during the Second World War. Well, although I've read my share of wartime stories, I wasn't really prepared for this book. Initially published in 1951, this is not a typical biography. These are Klosterman's notes, written during the Second World War and mostly unchanged, resulting in a very personal and vivid description of the events. A great deal of Klosterman's personality seeps through his writing, and, in the end, you almost feel like you know him. The book starts with his training in Wales, and you are immediately gripped by the description of his first flight on the Spitfire, a plane he quickly learns to love. Not long after, Clusterman goes on his first operational mission, and you see how ill prepared those young kids were when they were thrown into the maelstrom of war. More by luck than by sheer genius, Clusterman is able to return home alive. While flying missions over northern France, Clusterman is able to achieve his first victories, and it's not long before you start getting the feeling that he's on top of the situation. Well, as on top as you could be. His squadron also starts to pick up losses, and you are saddened by the stories of some of his companions failing to return. You end up with the feeling that returning home was more a matter of luck than skill, especially when facing the ever-present AA fire. After a few brushes with death, Clusterman is given a Spitfire Mark V with clipped wings and sent to Scotland where he spends a great deal of time. Although the pacing gets less frantic at this point, this is where you start to understand the French pilot's personality and possibly to like him. This quickly changes when his squadron is sent to support the D-Day landings and the initial advances in Normandy. There, hard fighting develops and we get a picture of the awful living conditions for these pilots on frontline airfields. But soon, another turn of events strips Clusterman from the front lines as he is sent to the French Air Force headquarters. The book leaves this period blank and we don't get much of an insight into what transpired while he was away, but we are told that he returned to the front line in December after requesting it many times. Now, this is the point where Mr. Clusterman got me. This is where I began to truly like him. His return to the front line wasn't because he had a death wish or was mad with bloodlust. It was because he couldn't stand those high-level French officers who hadn't done anything throughout the war and were more concerned with advancing their own positions than actually seeing the war to an end. He would rather be in the presence of his fellow pilots. This tells a great deal about the man Pierre Klosterman was. This is also the point where the book takes an interesting turn. The memoirs of Spitfire pilots are relatively common, but, on the other hand, first-hand experience with a Hawker Tempest is much harder to find. Clusterman was given training in a Hawker Typhoon and sent to France flying a Tempest. We quickly get the notion of how different the Tempest was from the Spitfire, and, despite being, by then, a highly experienced pilot, we get the feeling that Clusterman was somewhat afraid of flying the incredibly powerful Tempest. This new spell of frontline action is even more frantic, and we get told by Clusterman that, contrary to common belief, the air fighting in 1945 was harder and bitterer than the years before. While Germany had fewer and fewer resources, only the best pilots and the newest machines would see action, making an encounter with the Luftwaffe that much more dangerous. We also get a clear notion of how incredibly powerful the flak was. On a sadder perspective, we are left with the impression that the life expectancy of a newly introduced pilot was measured in days and not in weeks or months. Many of the veterans had so much experience that the newcomers were almost powerless against them. Anyway, there is another glimpse into Clusterman's personality when he and many of his squadron mates mourn the death of the famous German ace Walter Novotny. While it might surprise us to see this level of respect for a fallen enemy pilot, we are reminded that Clusterman was a human being and certainly not a killing machine. This made me like the French pilot even more. The final days of the war were filled with action and strange encounters, and we can sense Clusterman's relief when it all comes to an end. Then follows a quick glimpse into a period filled with uncertainty, and we are left with another bitter taste in our mouths when he clearly tells us that the world has no place for the military pilots that flew during the war. While we know that Clusterman did eventually find a spot in civilian society, working for companies like Cessna and Renault, we are reminded that unfortunately a great many didn't. So, put very simply, this is an incredible book describing the life of an incredible man.
credited with 33 aerial victories, Clusterman was a unique pilot and we are lucky that we get this glimpse into his life. If you are living under a rock like I was, I can't recommend this book enough. Simple to read, straight to the point and incredibly entertaining. The only issue I have with it is that I wish it was longer. With 245 pages on a 6x9 or A5 size, it's a relatively quick read, but I believe it's one you won't soon forget. If you already own a copy of The Big Show and want to get a different book for Christmas, I suggest that you take a look at the offer that Morton's Books and specifically Tempest Books have. The Secret Horsepower Race by Callum Douglas or the new ME262 by Dan Sharp can be found there and if you use the code ALLTHINGSWW2 you'll get 10% off and you are also supporting me and my channel. I hope you found this book review interesting. I'll certainly make more if that's the case. Let me know in the comments what other great pilot memoirs you've read and in time I'll certainly take a look at them. This is all I have for you today, thank you very much for watching.